folks, and welcome back to the second in the series of lectures on the chromosome basis of inheritance. In the last video, we learned how Thomas Hunt Morgan and other scientists determined that the heredity factors that Gregor Mendel described were actually carried on chromosomes. Improvements in microscopy allowed scientists to actually see that chromosomes must be the structures that heredity factors or genes are carried on. Homologous chromosomes, and hence alleles, segregate independently of one another during meiosis, the formation of gametes. In this video, we'll consider the role of sex chromosomes in inheritance in more detail. There are numerous and obvious phenotypic differences between male and female humans, most of which I'm sure you're aware of. You may also know that in humans and all other mammals, there are two varieties of sex chromosomes, an X and a Y. The Y is much smaller than the X chromosome. A person who inherits two X chromosomes will develop into a female. A male will develop from a zygote containing an X and a Y chromosome. As you may already know, only a sperm can carry a Y chromosome. Why is that? You should be able to figure that out for yourself. Only short segments of the X and Y are homologous. The development of testes or ovaries starts when the fetus is about two months old and is controlled by a single gene on the Y chromosome called the SRY gene. Before the gene turns on, there's no physical evidence of the fetus's gender. The gonads are simple buds of undifferentiated tissue. They're still called gonads, but they're neither testes or ovaries. Here's a model of a duplicated Y chromosome and the locus of the SRY gene. The absence of the SRY gene causes the development of the ovaries. Since a zygote with two X chromosomes will have no SRY gene, it will develop into a fetus that eventually has ovaries. Scientists have discovered 78 other genes that are only found on the Y chromosome and not on the X. A gene located on either of the sex chromosomes is called sex-linked. Those on the Y chromosome are called Y-linked, and those on the X are obviously, obviously called X-linked. The X chromosome has around 1,100 genes that are exclusively X-linked. Most of these genes have nothing to do with gender. They simply code for proteins, just like most genes on autosomes. These differences in the X and Y chromosome genes can give some interesting inheritance patterns that are not seen in the autosomes. X-linked recessive disorders are much more likely to be expressed in males than in females. In particular, red-green color blindness would really mean that an afflicted person can't distinguish between red and green color. Another common type is blue-green color blindness. The inheritance can be demonstrated this way. Here we can use this notation to show the alleles for seeing particular colors. Capital N represents the normal color sightedness, whereas the lowercase n is the mutated allele for color blindness. An afflicted male needs only one mutated allele to have the disorder, while a female must have two mutated recessive alleles. Because this gene is only found on the X chromosome, it is considered sex-linked, and more particularly, X-linked. You can see that females can be colorblind but the probability is lower than that for males. Other X-linked traits are much more serious than color blindness and can lead to abnormal development and even early death. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is X-linked. This is a disease that affects the, the production of a protein for normal muscle structure. Without the normal gene, an individual's muscles become rigid. Individuals with the disease rarely live past their 20s. Hemophilia is another X-linked recessive disease. Those with hemophilia cannot make the normal protein for blood clotting and can die from excessive bleeding. These diseases are only seen in males because in order for a female to inherit the disease, the father would have to have had the defective gene and the mother at least a carrier. Most males with these diseases don't live long enough to have children. Even if they did, they may make the conscious decision not to have children for the fear of passing on the defective genes. Now what's a female going to do with two X chromosomes? 
Does she make twice the number of proteins encoded on the X chromosome? The answer is no. In fact, each time a female cell goes through mitosis, one of the X chromosomes gets packaged up and becomes inactive. All of its genes are turned off. It can be seen in the nucleus tucked up against the inside of the nuclear membrane and it's called a bar body. The process is called X inactivation. These are cheek cells. This cell is from a female and this one is from a male. The inactivation process is random each time new cells are formed by mitosis. If a female is heterozygous for a particular X-linked trait, she'll have some cells expressing the alternate alleles in different cells of her bodies. This is called mosaicism. A great example of this is in the fur color in cats. The allele for fur color in cats is X-linked. Male cats will only have one color and perhaps white. White's not a color. White areas are simply areas where no pigment gene is turned on at all. Female cats who are heterozygous can have two different colors. This cat is carrying one allele for black fur pigment and one allele for orange pigment. As she was developing, her skin cells divided and randomly inactivated one X chromosome in each cell leading to what are sometimes called tortoise shell cats. You'll know that any cat with more than one color in its fur must be female. Remember, white isn't a color, so it doesn't count. In class, we'll discuss this more and look at some interesting problems regarding sex-linked traits in humans and in fruit flies. So that's enough for this video. I hope you better understand sex-linked inheritance patterns and took accurate notes. If you have any questions, bring them to class and we'll discuss them there. Until then, be well.